Welcome friends, I'm Dr. Rajshree Nambudrupad and today's video is all about autoimmune disease. In some ways, autoimmune disease is like the new pandemic because the incidence and prevalence is rising, especially in industrialized countries like North America, Europe, and Australia. Up to 50 million Americans suffer from autoimmune disease and every person with autoimmune disease is unique. Women are affected by autoimmune disease more commonly than men. Although the exact reason for this remains unclear, it's thought to be related to interactions between hormones, the microbiome, as well as the environment. In autoimmune disease, your immune system is attacking your own organs. There are nearly a hundred distinct autoimmune diseases, and some affect just one organ, while others are systemic, affecting multiple organs. For example, in Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, the immune system is attacking the thyroid. In multiple sclerosis, the immune system is attacking nerves in the brain or spinal cord. In rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system is attacking the joints. If the immune system attacks the liver, it can cause autoimmune hepatitis. Inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis affect the intestines. Type 1 diabetes is actually an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks and destroys the pancreatic beta cells which normally produce insulin. In the eyes it can cause uveitis, and in the bladder it can cause interstitial cystitis. Autoimmune diseases of the skin include psoriasis and vitiligo. It can also affect the kidneys, such as in lupus nephritis. Systemic autoimmune diseases can affect organs throughout the body. This includes lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, as well as vasculitis. For example, in lupus, it can affect the skin, causing a butterfly rash on the face. It can affect the joints, causing arthritis. It can affect the heart, causing pericarditis. It can affect the lungs. It can also affect the brain, causing neurological symptoms. And finally, it can affect the kidneys, causing lupus nephritis. So what causes autoimmune diseases? It's a combination of genetics as well as the environment. Generally, there are multiple genes that play a role in your risk of developing an autoimmune disease. Let's talk about celiac disease. This is an autoimmune condition where the immune system attacks the lining of the small intestine whenever the person is exposed to gluten, which is the protein present in wheat products. These tiny finger-like projections are microvilli on the lining of the small intestines. As you can see, there's a big difference between a healthy person and a person with celiac disease. Because of the autoimmune response triggered by gluten, this causes shortening of the microvilli, which can affect a person's absorption of nutrients from their food. People with celiac disease often present with abdominal pain, they may have a growth delay as a child, or they may have deficiencies in iron or vitamin D. When it comes to genetic factors, having the human leukocyte antigens or HLA markers DQ2 and DQ8 are definitely associated with a higher likelihood of developing celiac disease. However, there are two ways to make a definitive diagnosis of celiac disease. One is to do a blood test looking for a positive tissue transglutaminase IgA antibody, and the other is to do an intestinal biopsy looking for the flattening of the microvilli. The good news is when it comes to autoimmune disease, your genes are not your destiny. Identical twins carry the exact same genetics, but interestingly, sometimes only one twin will develop an autoimmune disease. In fact, studies have shown only a 12 to 67% concordance of autoimmune disease developing in identical twins. This is the power of epigenetics, which is the environment influencing the expression of the genes. One of the biggest environmental influences that we have in our control is our food. Unfortunately, the standard American diet can be very high in sugar, processed foods, trans fats, and hydrogenated oils. These kinds of foods can cause inflammation in the lining of the gut and also promote the growth of bad bacteria in the gut microbiome. This is a big deal because our biggest immune system is in the lining of our gut. Our microbiome can also be disrupted by exposure to antibiotics. NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, can also trigger inflammation in the lining of your gut. 
Finally, being under chronic stress can also cause inflammation and promote the growth of bad bacteria in your gut microbiome. Normally, the lining of your intestines is made by a single layer of cells that are bound together by tight junctions. And this serves as a barrier that prevents food particles, bacteria, and viruses from entering your bloodstream. If these tight junctions get disrupted due to inflammation or an overgrowth of bad bacteria called dysbiosis, you can develop a condition called leaky gut. In leaky gut, food particles, bacteria, and viruses can now readily enter your bloodstream. This can confuse your immune system and be a trigger for autoimmune disease. Leaky gut is also known as abnormal intestinal permeability. I have a whole video dedicated to leaky gut where you can learn about how to heal your gut, and I'm going to link that below. Next, infections are another potential trigger for autoimmune diseases. For some people, if they're genetically predisposed, certain infections with bacteria or viruses can confuse the immune system and be a trigger for the development of an autoimmune disease. This happens due to a process called molecular mimicry. This is when foreign proteins look like self-proteins. For example, when the human body is exposed to certain food antigens like gluten, bacteria, or viruses, this can trigger it to produce antibodies. These antibodies are made by the immune system to target these foreign antigens. The problem is due to molecular mimicry, these antibodies sometimes also bind to healthy tissues, and this can present as an autoimmune disease. Let me give you an example. So there's a bacteria called Strep pyogenes, which is a type of group A strep, which is responsible for causing strep throat. So this young boy has a strep throat infection and his immune system is creating these antibodies to attack the strep bacteria. These antibodies can later cause something called rheumatic fever, where they attack the body's healthy tissues such as joints and even the valves of the heart, causing rheumatic heart disease. Similarly, these antibodies can cause inflammation in the brain and can trigger a condition called PANDAS, which stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Streptococcal Infections. Unfortunately, a child with PANDAS will start having obsessive compulsive disorder and tics that appear shortly after a strep throat infection. So both rheumatic fever as well as PANDAS are great examples of how molecular mimicry can trigger an autoimmune process. Another example is Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is a rare neurological condition that's often triggered by a viral or bacterial infection, also through the process of molecular mimicry. The immune system produces antibodies to attack the virus, but unfortunately, these same antibodies end up attacking the body's own peripheral nerves. Sadly, this can cause symptoms ranging from mild weakness to severe paralysis. Once again, this is a very clear example of molecular mimicry triggering an autoimmune disease. Next, environmental toxins and heavy metals can also be a trigger for autoimmune disease. This includes exposure to mercury, which is found in larger and contaminated fish, lead, which is found in paints in older homes, as well as smoking and exposure to tobacco. Exposure to certain pharmaceutical agents, as well as medications, can sometimes trigger an autoimmune disease, such as drug-induced lupus. The good news is that once the drug is stopped, we see improvement in the symptoms as well as disease process. Silicone breast implants can also be a trigger for autoimmune disease in certain predisposed individuals. In the medical literature, this is often referred to as autoimmune inflammatory syndrome induced by adjuvants, also known as Asia. Silicone implants have been linked to autoimmune conditions such as sarcoidosis, Sjogren syndrome, scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Hashimoto's thyroid disease. There's also a condition called breast implant illness, where a woman with silicone implants will have vague symptoms such as fatigue, brain fog, joint pain, and rashes. The good news is that by removing the implants, there's significant improvement in symptoms within one year of explantation. I really want to emphasize the powerful impact of the environment when it comes to autoimmune disease. 
Here we have two sisters, Linda and Sally. As sisters, they have similarities in their genetics, but their environment and exposures were very different. Linda was born by vaginal delivery. She was breastfed for the first nine months of her life. She enjoyed eating clean, whole foods. Her job as a librarian was pretty low stress. So by the age of 40, Linda was pretty healthy. On the other hand, Sally was born by C-section. She was bottle fed and suffered from a lot of ear infections as a child, which required antibiotics. As a teenager and adult, she ate a lot of fast food and her job as a police officer was very high stress and exposed her to occupational chemicals. Sadly, at the age of 40, she was suffering from Crohn's disease, which is an autoimmune condition affecting the intestines. What's interesting is that Linda and Sally probably have two very different gut microbiomes, and as you can see, it had a big impact in the development of an autoimmune disease. To better understand autoimmunity, let's talk about the immune system. Normally, our immune system is our friend. It protects us from germs, foreign substances, and microbes that are in the environment. It even protects us from cancer cells that are formed within our body. There are two branches of our immune system. There's the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system is composed of cells that are nonspecific and respond quickly to a foreign exposure. In contrast, the adaptive immune system is more specific. It's a slower response that happens 4 to 14 days after an exposure. Looking closer at the adaptive immune system, it's composed of B cells and T cells. B cells mature in the bone marrow and T cells mature in the thymus. B cells are the ones that produce antibodies. Normally, if our B cell produces antibodies that are targeting healthy tissues in our body, such as antibodies targeting our thyroid, these cells will then be programmed to undergo apoptosis, which is self-death. So normally, our immune system does a good job of destroying any autoreactive cells. This concept is called tolerance, where your immune system recognizes you as you. So how does an autoimmune disease start? Autoimmune diseases begin when the adaptive immune system, which is the B cells and the T cells, fail to recognize self from non-self. Here we have autoreactive B cells that have escaped the immune system's normal checkpoints and they're producing autoantibodies that are attacking the knee joint and causing pain and inflammation. So autoimmune diseases begin when there's a breach of tolerance and there's a failure of the immune system to distinguish self from non-self. Typically, it takes multiple hits for your immune system to go awry. It begins with the genetic tendencies that you're born with. Possible hits to the immune system include viral infections and exposure to antibiotics as a child. Exposure to processed and inflammatory foods is another hit. Then we have exposure to toxins in the environment, like harsh cleaning chemicals and heavy metals. Inflammation in the lining of our gut and disruption of our gut microbiome is another big hit because remember, our biggest immune system is in the lining of our gut. Finally, chronic stress can raise your cortisol levels and this can be a final hit to your immune system, triggering an autoimmune disease. Autoantibodies are proteins made by your B cells that are targeting healthy tissues in your body. The presence of these autoantibodies is a marker that there's a breakdown in that sophisticated system of tolerance and that your immune system is dysregulated. ANA stands for anti-nuclear antibody and it's present in up to 25% of the population and the incidence is actually rising. Having a positive ANA does not mean that you have an autoimmune disease, but it could indicate that you have the potential tendency for autoimmunity. If you have a positive ANA, it's helpful to be proactive with your diet and lifestyle to prevent a progression to an autoimmune disease. If you're suffering from any symptoms, then your doctor is going to check more specific antibodies. Here are examples of more specific antibodies. The thyroid peroxidase antibody or TPO antibody is an indicator of Hashimoto's thyroid disease. Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, or the TSI antibody, is an indicator of Graves' disease. Rheumatoid factor is the antibody seen in rheumatoid arthritis. 
An anti-double-stranded DNA is the antibody seen in lupus. Once a person develops autoantibodies, it can often be months to years before they present with symptoms. For example, if you have the TPO antibody, which is indicative of Hashimoto's thyroid disease, it could be years before you present with hypothyroidism. The good news is this gives us an opportunity to intervene. In fact, many of my patients with Hashimoto's don't progress to hypothyroidism. We're actually able to slow down and reverse the disease process through a holistic approach involving diet, lifestyle, and some key supplements. To learn more about Hashimoto's thyroid disease, I have a whole video that reviews my holistic protocol on how to heal your thyroid, and I'm going to link that below. One common symptom that's seen in autoimmune disease is Raynaud syndrome. This is when the tips of the fingers turn white or sometimes even blue due to constriction of the blood vessels. This usually lasts a few minutes and then the fingers do return back to their normal color. Primary Raynaud syndrome occurs on its own with no relationship to an autoimmune disease. But secondary Raynaud syndrome is seen in systemic autoimmune diseases like lupus, scleroderma, Sjogren syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and connective tissue disorders. Now let's talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important for your immune system. In fact, it's considered a natural immune modulator. And having low vitamin D increases your risk for a loss of tolerance, which is associated with autoimmune disease. A great example of this is multiple sclerosis. This is a map showing the incidence of multiple sclerosis in countries throughout the world. Countries closer to the equator have a lower incidence of multiple sclerosis, and this is thought to be due to the increased sun exposure, which helps with the vitamin D level. Unfortunately, multiple sclerosis is seen more commonly in North America, Europe, and Australia, because these countries are further from the equator, there's less sun exposure, and there's a higher incidence of low vitamin D. Next, we have the hygiene hypothesis. Research shows that mice kept in sterile environments have a higher incidence of autoimmune disease. Similarly, the increased incidence of autoimmune disease in the Western world is thought to be related to growing up in an over-clean and over-sanitized environment. It's thought that our exposures, especially up to the age of three, can really impact our microbiome and our immune system. For example, a child growing up on a farm is going to have exposure to a lot of microbes from the soil, plants, as well as animals. So this child will have a much more diverse gut microbiome, which translates to a stronger immune system. In the Western world, we see a decline in infectious diseases, and unfortunately this correlates with a rise in autoimmune diseases, such as type 1 diabetes and inflammatory bowel disease. Let's look at these two maps. The first is showing the incidence of autoimmune disorders, which you can see is higher in the industrialized world. The second map is showing the incidence of parasite infections, which you can see is more common in the developing world. So it's thought that parasite infections may actually be protective against autoimmune disorders because it helps to strengthen the immune system through the gut microbiome. Traditional treatments for autoimmune disease work to improve symptoms by suppressing the immune system. Steroids like prednisone is used to shut down the inflammation during a flare-up Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen, is used to manage pain. Next, there are immunosuppressive medications and biologic agents. Although these drugs can be life-saving for some people, they do carry potential side effects. You may have heard of some of these biologic agents on TV commercials, and as you may recall, they have a long list of potential side effects, which includes cancers as well as life-threatening infections. So you may be wondering, how can we address the root cause of the autoimmune disease? The good news is there's absolutely a lot we can do through diet and lifestyle to help reduce inflammation and change the course of the disease. Let's start with the diet. The first step is to cut out all the inflammatory foods, which include refined sugar, gluten, dairy, vegetable oils, processed foods, and alcohol. Those with autoimmune thyroid disease, such as Hashimoto's, should also avoid soy products. For those suffering from joint pain, we often see improvement when they cut out nightshades from their diet. Nightshades are vegetables that grow at night, and it includes tomatoes, 
eggplant, bell peppers, chili, as well as hot sauce. Next, we have legumes and whole grains. The outer coating of legumes and whole grains have something called lectins. Lectins are the defense mechanism of the plant, but unfortunately for some people, this can trigger bloating, IBS, and inflammation in the gut. Often we need to avoid these foods while healing the gut, and then we can try to reintroduce them. For vegetarians who need to continue eating legumes, a couple tips include soaking them ahead of time, cooking them with a pressure cooker, and taking a digestive enzyme to help your GI tract better handle the lectins. What about eggs? Eggs are a common food allergy, but they're also a very nutritious food. So it's good to find out if you have an allergy to eggs by doing an IgE blood test. So this is a blood test that measures your IgE antibody level towards all the common food allergens, if your blood test shows no allergy to eggs, then it's fine to continue eating them, provided that you feel good when you eat them. The same thing applies to nuts. By doing that IgE blood test, you'll be able to figure out if you have an allergy to any of the nuts. However, it's best to avoid peanuts because they're technically a legume and they're often contaminated with a mold called aflatoxin. Nuts have lectins as well, so sometimes it's helpful to soak your nuts in water and dry them out to make them more digestible. Or you can take a digestive enzyme. The good news is white basmati rice is safe in autoimmune disease. It has no lectins and it's easy on the gut to digest. It also has a lower glycemic index compared to other white rice. Most importantly, you want to include a lot of anti-inflammatory foods in your diet. This means eating more wild fish, like salmon and sardines, to get more omega-3 fatty acids. The goal is to improve your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio because this helps reduce inflammation in the body. You also want to increase your intake of good monounsaturated fats by using good quality extra virgin olive oil and eating more avocados. The number one most anti-inflammatory part of your diet should be vegetables. Try to eat more dark green leafy vegetables and a colorful range of produce to get more antioxidants. This is the best way to heal your gut microbiome and reduce inflammation in the body. Finally, make sure that all your chicken and meat is organic or grass-fed. The diet I'm describing is very similar to the autoimmune paleo diet. However, it's a little less restrictive because I allow basmati rice, and if you're not allergic to them, I allow eggs as well as nuts. Finally, it's very important that you drink plenty of water so that you can hydrate your cells and flush out toxins. You can figure out how much water to drink by taking your body weight in pounds and dividing by two. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds, you should drink at least 100 ounces of water every day. Now let's talk about some key supplements that can be helpful in autoimmune disease. Omega-3 fish oil can help lower inflammation in the body, and those suffering from autoimmune disease can take up to three capsules, which is three grams of fish oil per day. Next, we have vitamin D, which is extremely important in autoimmune disease. So you wanna get your blood level of vitamin D optimized to 60 to 80, and usually this means taking 5,000 IUs of D3 with K2 every day after food. Turmeric Pro has the active compound curcumin, which has potent anti-inflammatory properties. It also has bromelain from pineapple and quercetin to also help lower inflammation. Next, we have methyl B complex, which is the stress vitamin. It also helps to lower your sugar and carb cravings, and it promotes detox pathways in the body called methylation. Finally, we have magnesium, which can help with joint and muscle pain. It also promotes deep sleep. It helps you to move your bowels. And it also promotes detox pathways in the liver. Now let's talk about healing the gut. To heal any inflammation in the gut, we can use the amino acid powder L-glutamine, which is food for the enterocytes, which are the tiny cells lining your small intestine. We can also use IgG Guard, which is dairy-free immunoglobulins to rapidly heal inflammation in the gut. We also want to repopulate the gut microbiome with good, healthy bacteria. 
Two of the most popular probiotics in my office are the Probiotic 100 billion and the Probiotic 225 billion, which have several strains of Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium. Next, we have digestive enzymes, which can make a world of difference in how you break down your food. When food is not digested properly, it can often trigger inflammation in the gut. Digestive Enzyme Pro can help your gut better handle lectins, which we talked about, and it can also help prevent bloating, improve your absorption of nutrients from your food, and reduce inflammation in the gut. For more tips on how best to take these supplements, please visit my supplement store and I'll put the link in the description below. The good news is even if you have an autoimmune disease, you can take control of your health, starting with your diet by making better choices about your food. Intermittent fasting is another great way to lower inflammation in autoimmune disease. When you give your body a break from food, it allows your cells to focus on cleaning up all the garbage. This is called autophagy, and I have a whole video dedicated to this topic, and I'll put the link below. Now let's talk about exercise. It's important to stay active and to move your body, doing whatever type of exercise feels the best. This could include walking, stretching, or even some gentle yoga. Next, it's important to manage your stress because chronic stress can raise your cortisol levels, which can cause more inflammation in autoimmune disease. In fact, stress can even cause the disease to flare up. Spending time outdoors and connecting with nature is a great way to reduce your stress level. Especially in this day and age where we spend a lot of time in front of computers, it's important to go outside and get some fresh air. Next, getting good quality sleep on a daily basis is really important for the healing process in any autoimmune disease. Now let me introduce you to one of my patients named Sharon. When Sharon first came to see me, she was suffering from fatigue, joint pain, brain fog, as well as hair loss. Her blood work revealed that she had a positive ANA antibody as well as a positive rheumatoid factor, so Sharon was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Sharon also consulted with a rheumatologist who advised her to start a biologic agent to help control her disease. Sharon didn't want to start the biologic agent because of all the potential side effects. Rather, she wanted to try a more holistic approach first to see if that could help. When I tested Sharon's gut microbiome, I found that she had significant leaky gut. So I helped Sharon clean up her diet. She cut out all sugar, gluten, dairy, and nightshades. I put her on some key supplements like fish oil, vitamin D, and magnesium, and I gave her glutamine and probiotics to heal her leaky gut. When I saw Sharon three months later, she had lost over 25 pounds, and all her joint pain was gone. Her blood work showed that her inflammation markers like her SED rate had come down from 43 down to 5, and her CRP had come down from 24 down to 2. She still had a little fatigue and brain fog, so she decided to explant her silicone breast implants. And what's amazing is six months later, Sharon felt completely healthy. I was also amazed to see that her ANA and rheumatoid factor had now turned negative on her blood work. So here are the key points. Autoimmune disease is caused by genetic factors as well as environmental triggers. Your diet and exposures can play a big role on the likelihood of developing an autoimmune disease. An anti-inflammatory diet, as well as intermittent fasting, can make a big difference in reducing inflammation in autoimmune disease. Your biggest immune system is in the lining of your gut, so healing your gut microbiome is a very important step in the healing process. Taking some key supplements like fish oil and vitamin D, and prioritizing lifestyle changes like stress reduction, sleep, and exercise can make a huge difference in the course of your autoimmune disease. Thanks so much for watching everyone! If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to hearing from you, so please post all your questions and comments. Thank you again and have a wonderful day!